the MFJ 941E. I'm familiar with these tuners because I already actually own one. I own a MFJ 941D that my wife gave me for my birthday back in like 1992. Unfortunately, that tuner is in storage and I need one now. I'm a thousand miles away from storage, so I had to reorder. In going through the MFJ catalog on the interwebs, um, and you get this standard catalog sent with it, but anyway, as I was going through the catalog on the interwebs, I found they still made this unit, and I wanted to see if they had anything um, better uh, that maybe sparked my interest, and they don't. I really like this tuner for several reasons, and this comes from, you know, a couple decades of use. So what I like is, first of all, it's ease of tuning. It has what we need. I think probably the most important part to me is we have our coax position switches here. We have coax 1, coax 2 that's in tuner mode, and then we can bypass coax 1 and 2. I also like the fact that it has uh, a ballon in it so you can um, run ladder line all this, which I've only done once um, back in the early 2000s for just a very short period of time. I think one of the neatest things about this is it has a an outlet for a dummy load. So sometimes I do use a dummy load. I actually own a, a big roller tuner from MMFJ that has the same feature and I do use my kilowatt dummy load on it. For this one I usually run like my my vertical ground plane on this and then I'll go like vertical horizontal and so it's pretty versatile. I mean you can put a dummy load on it, you can run a dipole a ground plane or another dipole or whatever. So I really like that. Um, the new ones, um, the, the E-Series has um, the little on-off switch. This is backlit um, when you put 12 volts to it, and you'll need this to use this cord that comes with it to do that. But I like the fact that they supply that. And you feed this with 12 volts, either from like a power supply, like um, you know your power supply that you're using on your radio, or um, an AC wall adapter, sometimes called a wall wart. And then on the RF power scale, It'll read 30 and 300 watts. So I got this from um, Gigaparts. If you can't get it from Gigaparts, you can get it from Amazon. I'll put a link down below so you could buy it on Amazon. Gigaparts just happened to have a sale on it, about 20 bucks cheaper than Amazon Prime at the moment. I really like Gigaparts. I also like Amazon. So, you know, you make the decision. Um, I opted for free shipping. That was in saving the extra 20 bucks. I opted for free shipping. I ordered that on a Monday and I just received it Friday afternoon. So if you know, if you're not in a hurry, maybe that's the way to go. But anyway, I'll leave the links down below. On the back of the unit, we have the coax one, two, and then your input, your transmitter, and then your dummy load slash another antenna if you want to. This is the uh, rear port for the um, 12 volt input, so you can uh, back, uh, light up the backlight. And then we have our configurations here for balance line and um, long wire. So that's kind of cool. It's an MFJ. A lot of people slam MFJ. I've had very good luck with pretty much everything I bought from MFJ. Although, that being said, I do take them apart and make sure everything's tightened down inside. We're gonna do that real quick. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna tear this unit down. And besides that, I, can, I can't own anything and not know what not what's inside of it. So I wanna see, hopefully I can remember what my old tuner was like inside. We're gonna revisit this and we're gonna see. So I'm gonna take this sucker apart and uh, then we'll go from there. Um, little history here. The very first MFJ tuner, which was a really bottom of the line unit that I owned, I took it apart because when I got out of the box, I heard rattling, okay? And it wasn't, you know, anything like the wing nut or anything. There was just something in there. There was a part that was loose and it was rattling. So I had to go in and um, do that. I also have done that with an Ameritron amp that I own as well. And um, I just like to do it. These guys are kind of in a hurry. And, um, you know, QC can be a little iffy from time to time with those guys. All right. So we're ready to take a look inside. One thing I failed to mention uh, when I was going over the front panel here was the new cross needle design, which is kind of interesting. I have a um, MFJ 986 roller tuner, and it employs this as well. And it took me a while to get used to it, but I really like it. 
the original version of the MFJ941 that I own does not have it. It's just a straight meter. So anyway, we've got all the screws taken off. So here we go. We're going to take a look. This is like going to be interesting to see. Okay. So that's an MFJ tuner. That's 300 watt tuner inside. Um, yeah. So what I did on my last few that I've gotten, I'll take a little silicone spray and just dab one right there. Everything in here seems to be okay. Everything's tight. All the solder connections are good. You never know. You know? Anyway, yeah, that's good. Um, this little switch down here could probably use just a little bit of tightening. Yeah, considering it's a multi-position switch, it's not like an open-air cap or anything, so see how she's kind of working around in there. Okay, so we're going to want to deal with that. Never lubricate these. Don't do anything with these. Leave these alone. And, yeah, that's looking pretty good. Boy, look at that massive ballon. Well, you know what? I got what I paid for. And I'm very happy. So that's no problem. So just real quick, we'll go around here and just make sure we've got, like, the, um... Oh, that's a little bit smaller Phillips. Okay, well, let me grab a smaller Phillips. Okay, so the uh, cabinet... Uh, the screws that are on the cabinet, they're, um, I used, um, what, a number two Phillips. And the screws on the back panel here are like a number one. I just don't have a one available, so I'm going to use a zero, that, a brand new zero that fits in there really nice. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of check these. So I'm not like being anal on this, but I don't really want to tear this apart a couple of years down the road. I'm going to be wrenching on this thing with, you know, large pieces of coax and, I don't want these things loose at all because I just don't want to have to deal with this again. So while I'm doing my little spot check here, I'm going to tighten this. So what I've got is I, I went and checked the first one here and it's loose. See? So I'm just going to give it a, I'm going to back it up here with this little mini crescent here. And of course I misadjusted it here. Come on. And I'm just going to cinch it up here. There we go. Boy, guys. All right, that one wasn't too bad. I'll get this top one. I'll grab this top and I'll get these easy ones first. Yeah, they're all not really loose, but they're not tight. There. And let's get in there. If I can get in there with this one, I know I could be using a better tool, but I don't have one here at this particular location. Kind of just winging it. Oh, yeah, this one was pretty loose, too. Okay, so all these SO239s are tightened up. That looks good. The ground lug here seems pretty tight. That's good. We'll go underneath here, and this goes to the balance, so I'll just back that nut up with my finger. We'll see what happens. I can use my number two here, I think. And we'll just go in here. Yeah, that was loose, but I'm not going to snug it there because, look, it's... Kind of wafered here, and I, and I don't want to bust it up. Let's see, what does this go to? This mounts the meter, so let's see what that's like. Yeah, that's okay. All right. And these screws here back up the coil. So let's see how these are. Not bad. Pretty loose. Did they use a star washer on that? No, they did not. So... You could put a star washer in there and that would be good. Anyway, I've got them cinched up. So they're pretty good. Let's see, what else was bothering me? Oh, yeah. The, um... Let's see. Yeah, the inductor control here. That switch seems to be kind of loose. So, let's see. Do they pull off? No, they don't. They use a little Allen. So I'm going to grab an Allen. I'm going to pop this knob off here. And then I'm going to, um... Probably snug that up too, just just for giggles. So let's see, what else am I missing here? Am I missing anything else? Oh, the two on the back. These hold down the board. So let's see what those are like. Oh, come on. Nope. I need stronger glasses. That's fairly tight. That didn't take much. 
And that didn't either. All right, I'm gonna grab that Allen. My Allen here, so I'm gonna, let's see, where's that located? Let's see, well, the Allen's gonna be on A. I mean, I could index, I could index this two way. Wherever the Allen is, I can do that on A, or we could just do the dot on G. And I'm sorry about my lighting here, guys, but it is what it is. So I'm gonna say A and G, so I don't lose my place here. We'll pop that off. And I don't know if the crescent I've got here. I should be using like a nut driver or something, but I just don't have that on hand. Okay. You know, I don't think... I think that's just a round hole. I don't think it's like a D hole or anything like that. So let's just see. Let's see what they're doing here. Did they take the time... Um, I call it a D hole, index hole, I don't know, whatever you want to call it. Is it round? Just a round hole? And yes, it is. It's just a round hole. So that means what we're going to have to do is when I tighten this up, I'm going to have to get on the back side of this and um, hold on to that. Because if I start wrenching on there and that shaft's not indexed, you know, it's going to... We're gonna have we're gonna have problems here. So let's see how we can do this. I want to kind of keep in camera frame here, but I want to get the job done as well. Something else I like about these new ones, um, the new versions of these MFJ tuners, that they have like a mylar. Yeah, it looks pretty good. The other ones used to be like silk screen painted on there, and, and my old one would scratch up, and it looks kind of hammered. It's like about 35 miles of bad road. And on these new ones, they have this mylar type faceplate that's silk screened, I, I think from behind. But um, I like that. That's pretty cool. All right, so let's put the Kanab on. Let's go back to G. Hopefully I didn't shift this at all. So everything should still line up, even though this is relative, right? So we'll do that, and G is still on G. I guess I could just adjust it just a hair more here, just just to the right of it. There we go. So that looks like that's good. Let's check the other ones, make sure they're tight. That one's loose. I'm glad I checked that. That was pretty loose, actually. Look at that. That one's pretty loose. And like I say, these matter, so... Let's see here, how can I get to the top of that one? There we go. I just, I hate, I hate it when you're doing something and the knob starts spinning around on the shaft. Okay, so we are looking good. Let's go over here and check this. I believe we're going to have to go up a size. It looks a hair bigger, so let's see what we're going to do. Yeah, buddy. Okay, the, damn, that is banjo tight. That is tight. Oh yeah, rock solid. Okay, cool. And upon inspection, I don't really need to get in there and do anything with that. I am not going to do anything with that as far as lube or anything goes. So that looks pretty good. Okay, guys. Well, so now stay tuned because this, I had to order this because I've got another video coming. And, um... This is going to um, go on my external stealth antenna. Um, I, I um, just posted a video the other day on that, so stick with me. That one's uh, stealth antenna part one. This is going to go on stealth antenna part two. And I really, you know, hate buy, rebuying something I already own, but when it's a thousand miles away, you got to do what you got to do. Well, this video should be over, but here, extra bonus material. So on my uh, old 941D, I just have the one um, position here for dummy load, and this one has the dummy load in tuned and bypass mode. Um, that is a really cool thing. Why? Why is it cool? I don't know if you guys have ever had a dummy load, whether it's you know swap meet dummy load or something that's you know just wherever you get it. But I have had this happen. My dummy load's not quite giving me the SWR that I'd like, and maybe that's the dummy load, maybe that's the coax. But anyway, I like the fact that you can 
tune it in there if you want to, or you can just bypass it, which is probably where I'll run mine all the time, but um, I like that. And the meters are lined up pretty good from the factory. They look pretty good. Uh, I can't wait to put this sucker in line. What a nice tuner. What a what a buy at 129, 149. What a killer price point. Tons and tons of bang for the buck. If you guys get one of these or you have one of these, um, give me some comments on it. Tell me how you like it. All right. Once again, the man of a thousand goodbyes over and out.